Ruger 1022s come in all kind of shapes and sizes, but my very favorite is the target configuration, which this is. And recently we did a build of this rifle and documented it on video, how to put everything, the installation of all these parts. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is, is go out to the range, do some shooting, and uh, just go through all the different parts and what I like or dislike about this setup. Knowing that this gun is capable of really good accuracy, it really makes it a lot of fun to take to the range and really to test your skill because you know the rifle is gonna be you know, spot on. Of course, you know, adjusting your scope, getting it sighted in. But once you do, uh, man, it's just a tack driver. And with 22, it's so easy uh, with the recoil, the report's less, and it's just a very pleasurable experience. It's one way to really get your other shooting techniques down, shooting 22 and being able to continue to shoot and to train for a lot less expense and yet be able to get all the fundamentals down. The barrel is an ER Shaw barrel, very finely finished, uh, just really nice when I was setting it in, you know, it just fit really well uh, with the threads on the front. And of course, I got this muzzle brake off of eBay. I think it was like $25. I wasn't really all that concerned considering it is 22, but it fit well with the barrel. Um, you've got to be careful with these though, because unless you have a crush washer or something to hold this, it's going to just kind of turn off the, <laughs> the threads. And, you know, maybe a little bit of Loctite would work, especially with 22. It's not as critical. You know, with 22, you don't really need a muzzle brake, but really I think it's more the cool factor. This is aluminum, which is not a big deal for 22 long rifle. Uh, the recoil with the barrel already is gonna be really soft. But I think, again, I think it just has that cool factor to it. Of course, the magplates.com extended release lever, magazine release, just drops them out really easy. It's really nice, because you don't really have to adjust your grip at all. You just bring your finger down and it drops it right out. Uh, it's made of all aluminum and it has a nice American flag laser engraved. Uh, they do have different models you can choose from or different designs, or you can get it just plain. The Bushnell AR-22 scope did really well. You know, for rimfire, it's really different than a lot of your other scopes. It does have the one inch diameter. Uh, one of the things it has is a bullet drop compensator uh, that just goes along the bottom. It's called the drop zone reticle, but it really gives it a clear picture and there's not a lot going on, which for 22, I like that. Uh, with the ranges of 22, it's not near as critical. Of course, you have your ocular piece here to focus, and then you have your piece here to be able to get your range estimation out. And what I really like are these turrets that you're able to adjust while you're sitting at the bench. Um, you know, this is not a tactical rifle. It doesn't really need covered turrets. Now, the rings were a little bit of an issue. The rings that I originally wanted to get I didn't realize that they were the kind that fit on those little 22 rails that are on the top of a lot of, uh, you know, the old rifles. So I ended up going to Cabela's and picking up some standard Warner rings there on the way to the range. And uh, these worked out fine. Uh, one of the big problems I had though was with this Tactical Solutions Picatinny rail, not with the rail itself because this is a really fine rail, uh, but on the bottom there's the little place on the scope. Uh, that comes out and it wouldn't fit on the rail without being canted and I had to take a Dremel tool and cut that out. Here you can see the area that I had to drill out. Wasn't a big deal, just uh, of the aluminum and this rail is going to be set for this scope and this mount so uh, no big deal but as far as the make of the tactical solutions it was a really nice fit. As you can see, I traded out the standard charging handle, which I had planned to do. Um, I'll have it annotated down here, the brand of this charging handle. I actually ordered it on eBay. Nice knurled little grooves, makes it really easy to be able to pull back. Uh, I like a little bit more. Uh, with the Kid Neoprene sleeve on there, it was really nice, uh, but this, this was very good. Uh, of course, I'm using the standard bolt, and this is one of the 50th anniversary bolts from Ruger. Uh, but it did very well with the cushion buffer in the back from Tactical Solutions. That is nice. That's a nice upgrade. 
uh, it really helps from that clack when the bolt comes back. I mean, it's riding in the receiver anyway, so there's going to be a little bit of noise, but it's not going to be anything like hitting that metal bolt back here in the back. The Boyd stock, man, this, I love this stock. I mean, it's very well finished. Uh, the checkering here and here, um, you know, and, and guys, you know, I've already released the video of this stock, the full review of just the stock itself, because I was so impressed with it. Uh, and check that out. I'll have that annotated right here, but I think if you're looking for a good traditional stock, um, you know, this is excellent. Now the Magpul uh, 122 stock, definitely a good stock, solid. But if you want something that's really classic, and of course you can get a lot of different finishes on here, and yet it's very ergonomic. I mean, this is made and cut for the shooter. Harris Bipod, you know, these are tried and true. I've had Harris Bipods for, you know, 25 years. And uh, just an excellent little bipod. They're not super expensive like Atlas and some of the others, uh, but they function very well. And uh, I like the features on these. And they do pop out. And so, you know, it, it's, uh, it has all the features that I need, especially for a little 22. Now, this was a little collaboration build with Brownells, and uh, they furnished all the parts for the build, knowing that I had already done a previous build. And uh, Brownells is a great source. They've been around for 75 years. One of the great things about Brownells too, and I noticed this when I was doing a lot of research on all these parts, um, is you know a lot of guys will buy a part and they won't like it or it won't fit right, and they, there's really no recourse. Uh, one of the great things about Brownells is no matter what it is, they have a 100% lifetime guarantee on all their products. So uh, it's just a great source, and obviously if they've been in business for 75 years, they know what they're doing. So check out Brownells, because anything that you can imagine, Brownells carries it, especially if you like to do projects like this. And I also want to thank Boyd Stock for this incredibly beautiful stock. Um, you know, guys, these stocks are just extremely well made. Uh, they've been in business for about 30 years, and they're doing it right. And with the laser engraving and all the different models they carry, I mean, if you've got a gun, they can fit it. Now, I do want to talk about the negative things about this rifle. Um, maybe I'll think about one next year because there is nothing negative about this rifle. I want to thank Federal Premium for furnishing the CCI Mini Mags. Really high quality stuff. And uh, sometimes, as you guys know, 22 can be difficult to come by. But um, it looks like it's coming back in, in little sections, but Great to have Federal Premium furnish this excellent CCI stuff. I love it. This rifle came in scope, bipod and all, at right at nine pounds. Uh, the barrel is a 16 inch barrel. Uh, with the Kid Innovative Design Project, it was an 18 inch barrel. And one of the things we're gonna do is take the two rifles out of the range and do co some comparison that way. Uh, one of the big reasons is because of the difference in quality, but also the difference in price. Uh, this little Ruger setup ran around $950, and I'm gonna have all the parts listed below in the description. Uh, for the Kid Innovative Design build, it ran closer to $1,350. Now that included the Ruger 1022, the stocks, and the, all the parts to go into that different project. Uh, so we're gonna sit down and just do some shooting and get, some, get the feel of the rifles side by side, but that's coming up. But uh, this really turned out to be a great little project, had a lot of fun. And uh, guys, I highly recommend, if you have a 1022, or even if you don't, and you've been thinking about it, putting together one of these target models, whether you buy it as a target model or you assemble the parts yourself, is a great way to go with the 1022. You know, yes, you can take a regular $200, $250 1022 and have a lot of fun. You upgrade it to the bull barrel and it really gets serious fast. Now, what else did I want to blabber on about? Eh, nothing. So the Ruger 1022 target project, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
The AR-22 stock, very nice, very clear. Guys, this may not be tactical, but when it comes to the target, this sure is surgical. Now, which I know a lot of you guys are gonna notice the Band-Aid on my finger. Let's just put it this way. Pinching one of these Harris bipods with your finger is not a lot of fun. 